The Shehalyan FPSO has been producing oil and gas in the harsh North Atlantic environment since 1998. Having produced from one of the largest subsea systems in the world for over 14 years, the vessel is due to be replaced with a new FPSO. To achieve this, there are various scopes that need to be completed in a safe and controlled fashion. The offshore element of the Quad 204 project starts with the 2013 off-station campaign. This will bring together personnel from the North Sea region, the Global Projects Organization, the Global Wells Organization and important third-party organizations working together as an integrated team. This team will address the multidiscipline challenges of working on an existing production facility, an extensive subsea production system and well stock comprising 52 wells from five separate drill centers. BP's team of engineers plan for the field to be shut in for a period of up to three and a half years from January 2013 until the new vessel is ready to start production in 2016. The first process that will need to be carried out is chemical treatment of the reservoirs. Prolonged inactivity could lead to a buildup of harmful hydrogen sulfide, or sour gas, from organic matter within the reservoirs. In order to minimize this, the reservoirs are overpressured with water and calcium nitrate. This non-toxic chemical treatment encourages bacteria within the oil and seawater mixture to metabolize the higher energy nitrates, minimizing sulfide production. Once the reservoir has been treated and the chemicals in the trees have been flushed, production shutdown can begin. Shutting down the water system will stop production for the vast majority of the Shehalyan production wells as these require artificial lift to flow. The remainder will be shut in using a soft shutting technique, using the choke on the tree. The control system will be used to close isolation valves on the production trees across the entire subsea system. Two naturally producing wells in the West Drill Center will be kept online to facilitate the crude oil tank washing on the FPSO. An ROV will then seal off the gas export line from the nearby Foynaven field by backing off the export line pull head from the manifold and installing a blind seal plate attachment. The ROV will be deployed from the subsea Viking. With all but two of the wells shut in, many tasks will be executed concurrently in a tight and complex schedule in order to clean the Shehalyan of hydrocarbons and prepare for safe towing. With support of the Loch Rannoch offload tanker, the vessel's pipes and separators will undergo a process of gross hydrocarbon removal, whilst its crude oil tanks will be cleaned using a technique called cowing. Cowing, or crude oil washing, uses production fluid from the two remaining online wells which is channeled to high-pressure guns below the vessel's deck. Months of meticulous planning ensure that the buoyancy and stability of the vessel is maintained as the tanks are systematically emptied for cleaning. The fluids are fired at high pressure against the wall of the tanks, while the flare burns off any excess gas. The solvent action of the crude oil and its naturally high temperatures make it far more effective than washing with water. In parallel to the cowing, the production lines are flushed of hydrocarbons using injection quality seawater. Pumps to the aft of the vessel send the water for the flushing operations subsea. There are four planned unique flushes of each production line. The first flush will complete bulk deoiling of the lines and will be done, in this example from Central, from the FPSO down one production riser, across a manifold and through a pigging isolation valve and back up through the other production line. After two further flushes with injection water, a final fill will be executed containing a chemical cocktail to eliminate the risk of corrosion during the field suspension period. The Scandi 7 vessel will assist cleaning the NWOD drill center. This drill center is an exception to the process because there is no available loop to flush water through. Instead, a hose will connect directly from the vessel to the manifold and flush back to the FPSO. After the production system has been flushed, there is still gas to be removed from the risers. 
The flow line jumpers are disconnected from the base of the risers and a pig catcher system is installed on the end of the riser. Within the turret of the FPSO, the 15-inch long foam pigs are installed in the riser hang-off end connection and pushed down through the riser using the firewater systems on board Shahalian. The pig will force out any remaining gas inside the riser along its journey. Travelling at about 1 metre per second, it takes the pig up to 20 minutes to travel through the 700 metre riser to the pig catcher where its arrival will be confirmed by the ROV's camera. With all 15 of the production risers disconnected and picked, and three dynamic umbilical risers disconnected and purged, it is now possible to begin the process of disconnecting the risers and umbilicals from within the FPSO turret and cross-hauling and laying the risers back on the seabed. At this point, the Shehalian will be gross hydrocarbon free for the first time since it began production in 1996. During the cleanup process, several modifications will be made to the vessel to prepare it for detachment from the subsea system and for towing. A temporary generator will be installed onto the FPSO to provide power following switch off of the main gas turbines. At the bow of the vessel, two new SMIP brackets will be installed alongside the two existing port and starboard brackets. Along with the existing SMIT bracket and the winch arrangement at the aft end, these will allow for the three required tug orientations. Heading control, station keeping and towing. Port and starboard navigation lights will be attached to blast walls near the living quarters. At the aft of the vessel, a temporary scaffolding platform will be installed to allow the removal of the export hose. The 103mm turret winch wire will be replaced with a new 76mm wire for the riser and mooring chain disconnection procedures. In order to achieve this, a messenger wire will be lowered through the turret and connected to another messenger wire by an ROV. The ROV will need to navigate through the risers in order to allow the FPSO to connect to the Olympic Challenger vessel. On the collar deck of the turret, riser spools are disconnected and pool heads installed. A scaffolded diver platform will be added within the turret. Over the two months, divers will assist with mooring line and riser release operations, working in a challenging environment where the sea swell can alter by 12 meters. There are 15 flexible risers and three dynamic umbilical risers that connect between the FPSO and the seabed. To remove them, the Fugro Symphony's crane picks up the tip of each flexible riser, carefully avoiding the remaining nearby risers and mooring chains. Floats at the base of the riser aid the process, as the riser is gradually looped back over and lowered to rest on the seabed. The 18 risers and umbilicals will be disconnected from the top sides one by one and recovered once the FPSO has been towed away. In order to fully disconnect Shehalian from its location, all 14 mooring chains will need to be removed. With one tug aft for heading control, an anchor handling vessel will crane each 350-ton mooring chain back onto itself individually. The lift vessel will lay each of the 1.8 km long chains safely down on the seabed. With two tugs attached to the existing bow smith brackets, the supporting tugs are positioned at their station keeping arrangement. Their role is to prevent the FPSO from weather vaning so that the mooring chains can be removed. Once the FPSO is finally detached from the seabed, a third arrangement of tugs will allow the towing process to start. Once the vessel has left the field, the job of recovering the risers can begin, with completion targeted for Q4 2013. In 2013, after 14 years of producing and contributing significantly to the energy requirements of the UK, Shehalian will be able to make its second ever journey to dock at port in Rotterdam. At this interim storage location, Shehalian will be fully cleaned and engineered down, ready for transfer to its new owner.